So it came with considerable anticipation. I was totally optimistic. It started off great, and then it wasn't great anymore. And then it was pretty bad. On Sunday night, I watched the Detroit Lions play the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship. I did so with excitement and commitment to my childhood city and team, hopeful that the Lions would win a Super Bowl berth. And evidently, I was not alone in my watching and cheering. Almost 57 million people tuned into the game with overwhelming support for the feline underdogs. While the Lions took an early and decisive lead and went into the halftime looking all but promised to pull off the win, and with it the joy and elation of dedicated Lions fans who have never known a Super Bowl rooting for their own team, it was not to be. And the third and fourth quarters portrayed a team decompensating quickly, and that glorious win so many had dreamed of just didn't happen. To say I was disappointed is an understatement. Yes, I yelled out loud at my TV. I cried. My mood shifted from happy and excitement to furious and then terribly sad. And then, not so long after, I actually felt grateful. What a ride it was to watch those games this season to see the team get better and be better and do better and succeed in ways I have never seen in my life. Ways that my papa would have loved. I believed in them. I watched them play in the stadium as a little girl. I hoped for them. I was excited and invested. And I believe that the best is yet to come for the Lions organization and the team will find its way to that big game one of these years. This experience came to mind as I considered this week's Torah portion. We read Yitro, named for Moses' father-in-law. After healing, hearing all Moses is trying to do to manage the ancient Israelites, Jethro instructs his son-in-law to recruit leaders of the community to help him, to listen to the people's conflict, and to act as judges. He explains to Moses that the task is too difficult for one person to do it alone. And then we read in this same portion of our people's Sinai moment, Revelation, as we receive the Ten Commandments. What I found interesting and relevant to my football watching experience is the juxtaposition of this week's portion with last week's portion. In Bishalach, we read about the ancient Israelites fleeing slavery in Egypt and specifically being chased by Pharaoh and his army to the water's edge. As the Israelites find themselves trapped, they complain bitterly against Moses, asking if it were for lack of graves in Egypt that they were brought to die in the wilderness. Moses assures the people that God will battle for them and deliver them. As they are standing at the sea with nowhere to go, God calls out to Moses and asks him, What are you doing? Why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to move. Go forward. Lift up your arm. Make the sea split. And as the people are standing in the mud, terrified, disillusioned, and ready to just give up, God splits the sea. And the ancient Israelites cross with the waters forming a wall for them on their right and their left to provide for safe passage. After our ancestors make their way, the waters return and drown the Egyptians in the sea. First, they're stuck in the mud and hopeless. Then they are redeemed, and then they receive the gift of Torah, the gift of eternal inspiration. Enslaved people could never have accepted Torah. They were literally not free to do so. And certainly, having been slaves in Egypt, the gifts of their freedom and their Torah meant all that much more to them. So I may be pushing it a little bit to say that the Detroit Lions were stuck in hopeless, hopelessness and redeemed this season by a franchise owner, coach, and teammates committed to a new way forward, and that they will receive that gift of ultimate success if they keep wandering forward. Yes, my rabbinic heart, even football can be Torah. But more seriously, 
for all of us, each one of us, this message, these pieces of Torah, can serve as a powerful reminder and a paradigm. We are reminded from sacred text, not simply the words, but the placement and proximity of the words and its narratives are instructive. As our wisdom literature conveys in these two portions, the journey from struggle to freedom to enlightenment can be steep and harrowing. For most of us, life has a bumpy road that jostles us out of our comfort zone and through experiences that are sometimes unpleasant and uncertain. And then, at some point, we emerge in an unexpected, grand, and even miraculous way to find something we never expected before, often something we could have never been able to know or appreciate the value of had we not endured the struggle that led us to the goodness. It may be a new relationship, a job, or a passion project that gives clarity to what was confusion and disillusionment. On this Shabbat, as we read this text, may we find the courage and patience in each other and our tradition to find our way out of the mud, through the narrow crossings to a freer place, and ultimately to a time that reveals the goodness and light that enriches our days in a more beautiful and meaningful way. Shabbat Shalom.